Let's say hypothetically you are a depressed, antisocial human life form. What are some things you can do to improve your well-being? Do you visit a doctor? Exercise? Perhaps go to a church to be purified? None of these are correct. Actually, what you have to do is vent your problems to a ghost where you can only summon them in a bathroom stall. That's basically a rough synopsis of what Toilet-Bound Hanako-kun is. If you haven't watched this anime, chances are you are aware of it through art pieces or AMVs. A lot of AMVs. But you never got the chance to fully invest your time to watch it. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, allow this random dude on YouTube tell you why Hanako-kun might be worth your time. This video is segmented by yours truly, so jump around the video if you like. Also, one more side note, this is my very first attempt at making a video that's over 7 minutes long. This might not be a lot for the average YouTube viewer, but usually I cut my videos to only 4-5 to five minutes so that it's easy to consume. That, and I'm a fat and lazy individual. But if this video can get a whopping 20 likes, wow, I know, it's asking a bit too much. I'll consider doing more longer videos in the future. Okay, I'll stop talking now. Onto the video. The story follows Nene Yashiro, a high school girl whose only desire in life is to get with the boy that's levels out of her league. In a normal situation, you would express your feelings to the person you're interested in. Nobody would go as far as try some supernatural stuff to get what they want, right? <laughs> oh god, she's doing it. Stop! Hands up! Get on the ground! This is where we see the star of the show, Hanako who, through a series of events in which I'll get back to, don't worry, is a ghost at the school and later becomes Nene's close friend. Eventually, they later meet Ko, who has the title of Exorcist, but not really. His primary mission in life is to follow his brother's footsteps, to become a pro-exorcist and to kill and exterminate all the ghosts of the school. But later, he's like, no, I don't want to kill all the ghosts. So he became friends with the ghost and life is good. When they're finally all together, the Dynamic Three go around the school and solve various mysteries and face against unworldly phenomena. That's basically what Hanako-kun is. As a 8 foot tall black guy with stunning looks, chiseled jaw, ripped abs, these characters are pretty damn cute. Can we all agree and say that this art style is, how do I put it? Refreshing. I would be lying if I said I didn't spend a good year wondering why this anime was something that always resurfaced out of the depths of my brain. If I were to make an educated guess as to what kept you engaged with the story and characters, it's probably just how damn pretty this anime is. If my eyes were stained by the large amount of shonen I was watching, Hanako-kun was the medicine that purified my soul. Aidairo, the mangaka of Hanako-kun, brought all these characters to life. It's very hard to forget some of these characters because the character design for each person is very distinct. I give you props, my man. Keep it up. If you do end up watching Hanako-kun, you'll find that the show's presentation of the show is clean. A recurring thing they do is add physical manga panels to tell an emotion or use transitional boxes to move on to a different setting, which in my mind, I'm like, you know you could have done less effort and I still would have been very satisfied. Toilet Bound Hanako-kun is just an anime with a huge aesthetic sticker slapped on it, and I'm okay with that. When we think of ghosts in worldwide film and media, we're supposed to think of them as these evil, resentful spirits whose sole purpose is to scare you, throw you around, slap you in the face once or twice, you know? That typical ghost stuff. Hanako-kun takes that idea, puts it in between two pieces of bread, proceeds to eat it, and then spit it out. What Hanako-kun does great is that you can sympathize with the ghosts. They are unfortunate people who were dealt a bad hand in life. Most of the ghosts in this anime had a lot of potential to be great people while they were alive, and now they can't anymore because they're wandering spirits. I'm going to spoil something very small just to get my point across, so if you don't want to get spoiled, please go to this timestamp. And if you're still here, you're an absolute chad and I respect you. We later learn into the anime that when Hanako was alive, he was supposed to become a science teacher, an occupation he dreamed of pursuing. All of his dreams were cut short when he ended up killing his own brother, and shortly after, died of unknown causes. This anime really has the heavy theme of regret. When it looks like everything is going well, and next thing you know, everything was taken away from you in a split second. However, most of these characters use this theme of regret as a catalyst to push themselves forward. Remember that? That one cringe thing you did in high school that you remember five years later as you're about to fall asleep? Yeah. I'm talking about that one. A lot of character progression stems from this idea. You remember that cringe thing because you don't want to do more cringe things in the future. Not just humans who do this, but the ghosts themselves want to move on from these past events and want to further better themselves. And I personally think that's very honorable. I've asked for forgiveness. And God told me that if I could fulfill this role, my sins would be absolved.
for all those fellow historians watching, you'll be pleased to know that many of the supernatural occurrences showcased in this anime are based off of real history and folklore. This guy has a 10,000 year old grandfather who was actually real and used to fight ghosts for a living. This ghost is one who controls mirrors and was based off of Michael Jackson's famous hit song, Man in the Mirror. Only very serious stuff here on this channel. Sorry. I can't hear you over this banger of an opening. The fundamental opening has to catch your attention. It's the 1 minute and 30 second segment where it's supposed to hype you up for what's to come. If you give me some sleeper opening, chances are I'm going to sleep during the actual anime. But this opening checks all the correct boxes. If you're a music freak, Oishi Masayoshi sings this opening, who also sang the opening for Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, and a couple for Overlord. Ending songs have to be equivalent bangers, but with less rock and adding the extra vibe check. You know Nezuko? Who doesn't know Nezuko? Yeah, she sings the ending. So if that doesn't add any brownie points, I don't know what will. Also, I've been trying to FC this song on Osu, but I can't stream for the life of me. Even if I hit the streams, my accuracy is garbage because I tap too fast. <sighs> this is why I only play gacha games. <sighs> Monkey. This is going to sound really monkey brain, but actually I have it on a piece of paper right here, so I won't forget. Let's see here. <sighs> what did I write again? Oh yeah. I like anime that's not boring. One of my biggest pet peeves with anime is that some of the previous shows that I watched would have been on the top of my list if the buildup wasn't so slow. What I like about Hanako-kun is that it doesn't stall one bit. I heard there's a ghost in the bathroom and it's very dangerous. Within X amount of time, we see Hanako, they fight Ariel without makeup, and both form a pact in the very first episode. I'll admit that I have the attention span of a 11 year old cracked out child. If you bombard me with useless filler, my brain is going to bed. But with Hanako-kun, my neurons aren't necessarily having a party, but a warm get-together. I enjoyed my time with Hanako-kun. The art style immerses you, the story is engaging, and by the end of the 12th episode, it's gonna have you asking for more. Hanako-kun gets a spicy 9 out of 10 in my book. The first season almost felt like build-up for the next, so I'm quite interested to see what they have in store for us in the future. I don't say this very often, but I humbly respect everything about this anime, its strong points and its flaws. And I can see why every once in a while I come across a Hanako avatar as I'm scrolling through someone's YouTube comments. The biggest question left unanswered in this video is, well, is it worth the investment? I don't know. With the 12 episodes it provides us, give it the 3 episode rule. If you don't like it, that's cool with me. But if you do end up watching all of it, come back and tell me what you thought of it. If you already watched it, tell me what you thought of it anyway. To the big brain manga readers out there, tell me if it's worth the read. I heard many great things about it and I'd like to know if it's worth reading past the anime itself. And finally, give yourself a slap on the back for making it this far. Apparently I'm doing something right, which is good. This is a completely different type of video apart from the ones I previously have done, so please support my efforts and you might see another one of these in the distant horizon. I'm Anormi, signing off. Take care.